It has become important to promote bilateral and multilateral defense cooperation and exchanges in multifaceted and multilayered ways to create a desirable security environment. In February, the then Minister of Defense Kono visited Germany to attend the 56th Munich Security Conference. He held the first defense ministerial meeting with Ukraine's defense minister, as well as bilateral meetings with the defense ministers of Canada, France, and Germany, and also had talks with the high representative of the EU and Secretary General of NATO, where they exchanged views on defense cooperations and exchanges and regional situations. In December, Defense Minister Kishi attended the 7th ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Plus, also known as ADMM Plus, held via a video teleconference and shared Japan's positions and views. The minister also attended the ceremony for the 10th anniversary of the founding of the ADMM Plus and delivered a speech on behalf of ADMM Plus countries. ADMM Plus is only government hosted defense minister level international conference in the Indo-Pacific region, which the MLG SDF has been committed to. Ministers exchanged views on regional and international security environment and adopted the joint declaration on strategic security vision of ADMM Plus. On the same day, Defense Minister Kishi attended the ASEAN Japan Defense Minister's informal meeting to exchange views on practical defense cooperations with defense ministers of ASEAN member states and announced a new project, the Japan ASEAN Cybersecurity Training Program for Defense Authorities. The SDF participated in the multilateral exercise COBRA Goal 20 from January to March. In the 16th iteration of Exercise Cobra Gold, new training programs such as response to cyber attacks and parachute training were conducted. In November, the MSDF conducted the Japan, US, India, Australia Multilateral Naval Exercise Malabar 2020 in two phases. Australia participated in Malabar for the first time in 13 years since 2007. The exercise not only improved the tactical skills of the MSDF, but also produced significant results in naval service-to-service -service collaboration among the four countries. The deepening of cooperation and exchanges will contribute to maintaining and enhancing the free and open Indo-Pacific and thereby to the peace and stability of the region. The MOD SDF conducts capacity building with various countries in the fields of security and defense. The initiatives in FY2020 include the following. Under a capacity building program, 21 commanders and civil engineering machine operators of Lao People's Army were invited to Japan in February and received education on road restoration disaster recovery, and other activities at the GSDF Engineer School. Through the invitation program, the MOD SDF ensured strengthening japan Lao's cooperation in the fields of humanitarian aid and disaster response. Also in February, eight Indonesian National Armed Forces or TNI officers were invited to Japan to attend capacity building program including observing the Northeastern Army Headquarters and Japan-US Bilateral HADR exercise. Two officials of the Indonesian National Disaster Management Agency or BNPB who were invited by JICA also participated in the program. Through the invitation, the MOD SDF deepened the participants' understanding of the SDF's activities to enhance its ability to respond to disasters. In addition to these efforts, the capacity building projects using the knowledge and experience of the SDF not only strengthen friendly relations with partner countries, but also create a desirable security environment for Japan by enabling the recipient country's forces to undertake a different role in maintaining international peace and regional stability. In 
Since April 2019, Japan has been dispatching staff officers to the headquarters of the Multinational Force and Observers, a m e s o in the Sinai Peninsula at the first international coordinated operations for peace and security. Currently, two staff officers are carrying out their duties such as supporting the promotion of dialogue and confidence building between Egypt and Israel concerning ceasefire monitoring activities. Since November 2011, Japan has been dispatching staff officers to the headquarters of the United Nations Mission in the Republic of South Sudan, a m i s Currently, four staff officers are carrying out their duties, such as planning and coordinating each of tasks, including logistics, database, engineering, and air operation. Sending staff officers to UNMIS is one of the tangible examples to practice proactive contribution to peace by Japan. Under the banner of proactive contribution to peace, Japan will continue to make further active contribution in the field of international peace cooperation, including enhancing capacity building and dispatching units and personnel while leveraging Japan's strengths based on experiences so far.